Aloha, you're watching F5 On Demand. I'm Senior Technical Marketing Manager, Peter Silva. We're here in San Francisco at the Moscone Center for RSA 2014, booth 1801. Why don't you come on down and visit us? And if you do come on down to booth 1801, you too can see a demo of our new secure web gateway solution that we announced this week. And we're fortunate to have Joel Moses, Director of Product Management Engineering. Hey, Peter. Joel, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. It's been a little while. A little bit, a little bit. So you've been working on this stuff, huh? Yeah, we've been hard at work uh, producing this. So tell us a little bit about Secure Web Gateway. What kind of problems does it solve for organizations out there? Well, organizations, mm -hmm. a lot of organizations, especially enterprises, have trouble with, uh, with malware, with, with uh, what we call malfeasance and malingering. That's David Holmes' term. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's misuse of corporate resources, uh, mm -hmm. you know, bandwidth wasting applications, uh, applications that have really no business ties, and, and they want to control that. They also want to control the spread of uh, malware incoming from web threats. Right. Uh, you typically get tighter control over it than something like a, a next generation firewall by deploying something in a, a class of products called Secure Web Gateway. Uh, these can be you know, proxies or they can be transparent entities, but they're focused specifically on the task of web security, and yeah. so that's what we've got here today. And so really, in a lot of ways, <clears throat> you know, kind of discouraging those to spend hours on end on social media sites. And if they just so happen to get to a site that, that might be acceptable, but could be delivering malware, like, a, like many sites do that we sure. visit every day, to help them in that situation too. That's right. Now, the problem is even harder when you have a situation where the sites might actually be under encryption, mm. right? Uh, so we have to have the capability of doing things like SSL interception, but we want to also maintain user privacy, and so we can exception things by, by the use of a category engine, and we're going we're gonna to talk about that in a little bit here. Uh, but the benefit of us doing the SSL interception is that in hardware, we're really good at SSL operations, and yeah. so we can take those interception operations and up-level that into hardware, and, and handle a larger amount of traffic and handle it much more, uh, much, much more scalably. Got it. So what do we got up here, Joel? So what we've got up here is um, I've got a, we're, we're working with an environment that actually uh, supplies uh, web filtering and malware inspection to a VDI environment that okay. we've built. So people can log into their desktops from remote and then they get this, this uh, policy applied to them. What we're looking at here is... That, uh, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's actually quite applicable today with like... VDI, protecting against malware, like one of the things people talk about VDI is making it more, the desktop more secure. Absolutely, yeah. And, and this, uh, this helps out with that. So we, what we're looking at here is actually a sampling of traffic that we've seen. Uh, this is our dashboard view, and you can actually take this and move it out to, you know, say, last month, uh, and get a, a list of, of objects that are being requested most often. You can also look at, for example, last month's uh, list of requests. Oh, so yeah. it looks like we're preponder uh, preponderance of our traffic is uh, streaming media. Now that might lead us to do things like bandwidth controls for those streaming oh. media sites. Um, and then you've got blocked requests down here. We've got things that are blocked under uncategorized. Uh, there's a couple down here like uh, the sex category. Um, the, the interesting thing about this solution is as it's actually doing its categorization, uh, you can actually drill in and see things by user, uh, and you can even drill into these categories directly. So if we click here, that shifts us into a view for the last month, and we're going to look at the users. And these users are all the users who uh, actually accessed things in the category sex. So uh -oh. the last, yeah, I, I won't. I, we'll we'll skip past <laughs> that. It's just a demo environment, I folks. I know it's a joke. But we do that by creating, uh, by creating first of all, uh, a list of categories. Okay. Uh, and these categories are incredibly extensive. I'll, 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 uh, I'll put these out there. Uh, we've got things like adult material. We've got bandwidth categories, so things like personal storage uh, oh, right. and, and back, backups. Uh, and then you've got viral videos, right? Yep. So maybe you don't want to block just uh, the YouTube application, period. Maybe YouTube has business uh, business relevance to you, but like this video, like this video exactly. <laughs> but what if uh, what if you want to protect against things that go viral? You know yeah. the cat videos that go completely insane. Uh, you can actually uh, activate that category. That category is one of the real time categories. You get a an update every five minutes, a feed, a live feed of the videos that are going viral, and you can create controls around those. 
You know, one of the things back in the back in the olden days of the internet, right, a decade ago, there were these types of units out there that protected based on keywords. Yeah. Sex being one of them. But unfortunately, many of those solutions a decade ago would block like Middlesex England and anything that had even those three letters in it. How is this different? Exactly right. So this is different because it actually goes, there's a service that, that uh, you subscribe to that actually goes out and, and, uh, and uses a lot of different techniques to, to get an accurate categorization for the individual site and the objects underneath that site. Yep. Okay. So you're not just doing keyword matching, you're actually leveraging a cloud service that feeds things down uh, to you. Uh, so it's, it's much more accurate. Now you can create individual filters here, and filters are just lists of uh, whether we want to block or allow individual categories. So under basic security, for example, uh, we're blocking things like compromised websites, malicious websites, spyware, you know, botnet endpoints, mobile malware. Um, and then you, you can take those and bind them together in what we call a scheme. And a scheme allows you to, for example, add a, a schedule to it. So you can say, this filter list applies during business hours. This other filter list will apply on non-business hours, right? Granularity. Granularity. It also allows you to control whether you want that particular scheme to have uh, an, an advanced response scanning capability. So oh, if I you see. want to scan for malware as it comes in, maybe there are some subnets that you trust fairly well or maybe that you don't really care about, like guest networks, and you can turn off the response scan uh, in order to let it fall to the end user. Oh, um, so, and again, that saves you a little bit of operation on the gateway, uh, gives you a little more performance. And I've, on the previous screen, I kind of noticed that there were um, a, a number of selections for this particular scheme. And so there's multiple rules per scheme. Is that how it works? There can be. There can be multiple rules per scheme. There can even be multiple schemes per policy. Ah. So we do this like we do with a lot of APM things. Uh, we, we actually do this through the creation of an access policy. So here's an access policy. Uh, it's a very simple one. This just does what we call an SWG scheme assign uh, when a successful access occurs through NTLM. That, that's very easy, but yeah. that's a single scheme. Now what if we wanted to do something more complex than that? We wanted to build something like uh, uh, a, a, a very sophisticated policy. So here's one that actually uses an AD query. Uh, you can actually branch off of that AD query and then do multiple scheme assignments based on the outcome of that user's I, uh, group information, for wow. example. Uh, you can do it by IP address. You can do it by whether their platform is healthy or not. So if they have antivirus, uh, it's, it's basically up to you. Yep. Right? Gives it a lot more flexibility than other secure web gateway products are capable of. I mean, it, it is amazingly granular and tied to a, a number of different criteria to then take action. That's right. That's right. Now, in terms of taking action, uh, we, we have a couple of different ways to, to, to view the event logs and, and, and work with the data that the Secure Web Gateway learns about. Uh, one is through the use of simple reports, uh, which we can get information about. So, in the event log view, when I look at the uh, accesses in the hour, you'll see that we've got each access that's being logged. I'm logging a lo uh, allowed and block. Uh, I can create custom searches here. I can export this to CSV. That's all local on Gateway. That's great. But we can also bind to uh, our high-speed logging interface, mm. which allows us to target these logs to things like Splunk or ArcSight uh, very, very efficiently uh, and export those in the format that they need so that those, uh, those tools can be used for your reporting as well. And, and when you talk about actions to be taken, what, what are some, I mean, obviously blocked is, you right. know, obviously one of the actions. What does the user see? Do they get a message saying, well, you know, no, no, bad what, boy? Let's take a look at that. Um, so let me close this screen. So what I've got here is uh, I've actually got a view, this is an APM view, of various, uh, various uh, virtual desktop solutions. So we've got Zen Desktop here, we've got, uh, we've got VMware View, we can do RDP. But uh, let me go ahead and open uh, my VMware View Desktop. Okay. So this will take just a minute to launch. And while that's launching, I think one of the things that, that um, is also key for, for our audience to know is you keep mentioning APM. This is available on, on the Big IP Access Policy Manager. That's absolutely right. Uh, SWG is actually a subscription service. So you activate the subscription service and it's additive to an APM instance. So we're going to go ahead and uh, let this uh, VMware instance fire up. Um, 
what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be simulating here is an automatic login uh, to a proxy that we've, we've created for this, uh, this secure web gateway. Okay. And then we're going to, you know, exercise that a little bit. We're going to go to... <laughs> We're going to go to uh, some secure websites. We're going to go to uh, we're going to go to some blocked websites, and we're going to see what happens to it. So here we are. Nice fill, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you know we're accessing the internet here. That's great. Uh, I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to look at uh, the sessions that uh, have been established. And you'll notice that we've got hey, there's my session look right there. Uh, it was automatically created uh, based on the fact that. Uh, you went to the internet, to, to the web. TLM, and you, yeah. you can see that I authenticated and what workstation I authenticated from. Uh, and then it's tied a scheme to uh, me, yep, right? I see that. Exactly. So we're going to exercise that scheme a little bit. I happen to know that uh, because, you know, Facebook is a time waster, right? That should probably be blocked. Oh, and so there we are. We've got a block page. It's been assigned as part of my, as part of my session. Um, this is, by the way, customizable. Sure. Right? So if you want to replace this content with any other content that you specify, you can do so. And we see the reference number tying exactly. it in case the user maybe wants to go back to IT and say, hey, I, I didn't realize that. And then also the category, it looks like what, they, what category that particular site was in exactly. based on That's exactly, the scheme. That's exactly right. So if you go back to manage sessions here, you'll notice this session ID and the session ID here, they absolutely match, Look at that. right? So, so you've, got, you've got the ability to go back and correlate. recover all this data and correlate. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and do something like um, let's uh, go to HTTPS. How about American Airlines? That's a good test. So it's going to go to a secure site here, and, mm -hmm. and the site's going to load, and that's fantastic. Uh, only you know that's an HTTPS site, so we shouldn't have been able to inspect anything for malware right there. Only we've actually put a policy on here that rewrites that uh, encryption as it goes through Secure Web Gateway. So that we can, uh, so that we can basically have insight into that transaction. Wow. Now you don't want to do that for everything, though. So we actually do have the capability by a particular site. And then being able to do this is really our proxy, the dual oh, yeah. proxy architecture, and the and the power that provides. Exactly. Now, if I go to Bank of America, that's a banking site. I probably don't want to mess with that too much. You'll notice bar turns green, and if I look at it, that's a VeriSign certificate. It's not my internal certificate. So. We've been able to bypass that just strictly by watching the connection, making sure that uh, making sure that it's in a category that we want to bypass for that. Mm. And there it is. So if I go back into my reports over here, into event logs, and I take a look at what happened, it's going to load up here. And what you're going to see is that uh, we've got activities like Facebook, and those are in blocked category. I also noticed you can see the uh, MS ads, and I noticed oh, yeah. ads were one of the tall graphs from that one screen we were looking at initially. Exactly. So it, this policy, by the way, blocks those ads, nice. which is kind of interesting. Gives you a little bandwidth back. Yep. And probably protects to some extent, because we've heard a lot over the years about the banner ads, uh, the ones that are deploying the malware, because they're coming, they're coming bad from the, from the ad server, plunked on the site, and you just happen to go to the site, and because that banner ad's flashing, you get the malware. Yeah, absolutely. So this gives you that kind of protection. But as you can see, we were able to, to do all this, uh, this blocking action. We were able to do the proxy action. So basically, a single piece proxy, uh, a high performance SSL intercept capability, and uh, also the ability to, to do a very sophisticated access control and session management structure around it in a very flexible way. This is pretty cool stuff, boy, wow. We've been, uh, you know, I, I don't know if our audience notice, no, knows, but uh, I've been actually doing these videos now for five years. This is my fifth RSA show that I've been doing on video. And five years ago, we didn't have a booth at RSA. We was doing some, you know, partner videos. And, and the amount of security protection that we have built just in the last few years is mind-boggling. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If you uh, go to any one of our big IP systems and you click on this resource provisioning tab, and you look down and you see how many products actually have a tie to security. You know, you've got ASM, you've got APM, you've got AFM. Um, you know, AAM actually has some protection capacity as well. So CGNAT, lots of different things are, are tied into the security task. And that's very important. And it's, it's, uh, it's something that's done very well with our technology. Absolutely. Plus ICSA certified firewall across all platforms. And you're good to go. 
So I really appreciate it, Joel. Yeah, absolutely. It's great stuff. A little bit more, actually a lot bit more. This is really detailed, but an excellent demo of our new secure web gateway that we announced this week here at RSA. So for Joel, thanks again, man. I got Eric behind the lens again. He's smiling now, because I don't know if he likes to be called out, but it doesn't matter. I'm Peter. I'm going to do it this way. And we're with F5 Networks. Thanks for watching.